Hi, Member Parliament, Mark Werwa from beautiful Langley, and we're in Ottawa. We um, are thrilled to have Reggie Littlejohn, a world expert on gender side, here in Ottawa. And uh, she's gonna be speaking to members of Parliament in about a half hour. Uh, and she's our guest speaker at a, at a lunch. And I'm thrilled that you're here, Reggie. Um, you are one of the world experts on, on China's one-child policy uh, and the gender side, that that is, uh, is part of the world global crisis of gender side. I think China has the, the largest gender imbalance in the world. <clears throat> there are other countries like India. Um, in, uh, well, it is a global problem. So you're here uh, to encourage members of parliament to take a stand and to say gender side is wrong um, and share with us some of the societal problems that goes along with gender side. Like what are the consequences to societies where you have 200 million missing women and girls in the world right now because of this practice? So you're also a, an expert that has spoken to U.S. Congress numerous times. You've what what different governments and um, parliaments have you spoken to? Well, I have spoken about gender side at the United States Congress, the European Parliament, the British Parliament, the Irish Parliament. Uh, I'm about to go down to the United Nations and speak in four different venues concerning this. I've briefed the White House, the Vatican, and the State Department on gender side. And the reason that I am committing my life to this issue is that it's the biggest women's rights issue in the world. I'm the president of Women's Rights Without Frontiers, and the fact that there are 200 million women missing in the world today because of sex-selective abortion is something that anyone who cares about women's rights has got to be outraged by. So there is a movement internationally to end gendercide, the United Nations has come out against it, and I'm, ask, I'm here to speak to members of the Canadian Parliament and ask them to join this movement to end gendercide. You said it's the biggest human rights issue in the world right now. Why? Well, it's the big, biggest women's rights issue in the world right now for two reasons. Number one, because of the sheer numbers involved. 200 million missing women in the world today. And secondly, because there is nothing that is more violent, uh, more violent form of discrimination against women and girls than selecting girls for abortion. So that's why it's the biggest women's rights issue in the world today. Mm. Reggie, uh, I've introduced a, uh, a motion uh, not into the Canadian Parliament, not seeking any legislative change, not calling for a study. M408 is uh, seeking Canadian Parliament to condemn the discrimination against females occurring through sex selective pregnancy termination. Um, is that a global problem that Canada needs to take a stand on? Well, I absolutely think that Canada needs to take a stand on it because Canada holds itself out as and is perceived as a leader in human rights. So if Canada just Canada just remains silent on this issue, then what that means is that, that Canada doesn't care. Or that uh, and, and what that does is it sends a message to the world that sex selective abortion is okay. You know, Canada needs to take a stand on this as a global leader in, in human rights. And I think it will have an impact. I think that when Canada says we condemn sex selective abortion, what that does is it, it, it sends out the message that this practice is wrong and hopefully that will add to the movement to end it. So Reggie, uh, there is this Vienna Declaration that you shared with me. Uh, so the United Nations, I believe, in 2011, right. about a year and a half ago, came out calling on different uh, governments to stand against gender side because of its uh, violent form of discrimination against women and girls. And we all want to stand against discrimination against uh, girls, whether uh, in all forms, uh, whether it's when they're alive or before they're born, any form of discrimination. So could you tell us about the Vienna Declaration? Well, in November of 2012, uh, a group there was a symposium on femicide, that is the killing of females, in Vienna, and they signed the Vienna Declaration, which uh, opposes all forms of, um, of, of killing of, of women from gendercide in, in terms of 
uh, sex selective abortion of baby girls, the abandonment of baby girls at birth to die, the neglect of, of girls between the ages of zero and five in, in nations that practice gender side. They also have a discrimination against girls in terms of medical attention. That if a girl gets sick, she doesn't get to the hospital in the way that a boy does, so that the gender ratios at age five are worse than they are at birth. And then there are other forms of femicide as well, um, you know, as, as life goes on. Dowry, uh, bride burning in India, etc. So the Vienna Declaration opposes all forms of femicide. But I would like to talk a little bit about one of the unintended consequences of, um, of this gendercide in China, which is that uh, because of this gender imbalance, right now the, uh, at birth it's about 120 boys born for every 100 girls born, and that has given rise to a situation where there are approximately 37 million more men living in China than, fem than women. And what that's doing is it's driving human trafficking and sexual slavery, which is another form of violent discrimination mm -hmm. against women and girls. Yes, it's creating very serious problems for societies around the world, so it is a global problem. So Reggie, I want to thank you for being here uh, in the Canadian Parliament. Um, you are uh, recognized as a world expert. We really appreciate you being here in Ottawa. It is cold today, um, but uh, thank you so much for being here. and. Uh, we look forward to you speaking to the different members of Parliament and um, our hope is that uh, we will listen to you and we will stand up and do what is right and stand up for the rights of women and girls. Thank you so much, Reggie. Thank you.